So you have already maxed out your graphics card overclocking and CPU overclocking and still want to get some more performance? Well, RAM overclocking might be the thing for you. Today we are going to show you how to overclock your DDR4 RAM and uh, this kind of can be also used for DDR5, although the values and uh, Different clock speeds can be different obviously because DDR5 is clocked much higher and has different latencies so we may do a guide for DDR5 in the future as well. Just for your info, RAM overclocking is kind of difficult because it's first of all there are many different parameters that you can set up and also it is very difficult to get 100% stable. So if you have really sensitive data on your PC that uh, you cannot lose or you do not have the time to validate your overclock properly, then you should probably not look into RAM overclocking because the risk that the overclock is not 100% stable is relatively high. Although I'm going to show you how to test for a stable RAM overclock as well. So let's get into it. So for overclocking the RAM you will need multiple programs. First of all we are going to use the Ryzen DRAM timing calculator to um, give us some reference of uh, where we need to go with our RAM. Then we will be needing the Typhoon burner which is going to tell you what RAM you actually have. Yes, I know you have a brand of RAM like GSK Corsair or whatever, but what modules are actually installed on that RAM? And we need some kind of well, benchmark or tool to test the RAM. For testing RAM speeds, you can use a 3D Mark Time Spy. The CPU test, for example, is very good in telling you RAM speed. Or if you want a free software, you can use uh, SuperPy 32M. That is also going to give you a result uh, that you can tell apart. For stability testing there is a tool on the Ryzen time calculator that is called MemTest or rather HCI MemTest which is a MemTest utility that you can use within Windows. You can use this in 2 GB instances so if you have 16 GB just use six, uh, 7 or 8 uh, instances to test your RAM so you will be able to do that with this. First of all, what are we going to do? We are first of all going to find out what your RAM actually is. For this we are going to start the Typhoon burner and going to read the SPD on the RAM. So basically what chips are used on this RAM stick, which might be from Hynix, might be from Micron, might be from Samsung. That differs from stick to stick. It can even be on the same kit. So if you bought a G-Skill Aegis kit like I did, there might be somebody that bought a kit that has Samsung modules on it and you might have Hynix modules on it. Um, this can be different from kit to kit because of the prices of DRAM, uh, those fluctuate quite heavily. So manufacturers, on, especially on cheap kits, decide what chips to use by what is the cheapest one at the moment that achieves those specs. In our case, we have some Samsung OEM dies. It does not say anything else but Samsung. If you have, for example, Samsung B dies or Samsung E dies, it will say E or B die next to the amount of chips. And that's the point where you can judge how much your RAM will actually overclock. Because for example, on Samsung B dies or Samsung E dies, you will have a pretty good chance of getting your DDR4 3200, for example, even up to 4000 or more. Just as an example, these Samsung B dies are also used in some 4600 kits and they are just the same dies but only selected because of their overclocking ability. If those dies were on a Samsung OEM RAM stick, they would achieve exactly the same clocks as they would like on a Corsair 4600 MHz kit. This is the amazing part about RAM overclocking. You achieve, you can achieve quite high clock speeds no matter what RAM you buy if you have the right ICs on there. And where do I know from what clock speeds I can achieve? That's where the DRAM timing calculator comes in. 
in that software you can select all the specs you have for example first of all you can select your system that you have in our case this is uh, only a Ryzen DRAM calculator but some of the or most of these settings should apply to Intel as well and there you can select the RAM you have the actual dies you have on from that on this software will calculate what timings and clock speeds you can use. The thing is you also have to select your target frequency. That means the frequency you want to run at. In our case, we are choosing for our Samsung OEM dice. In theory, that's a 3200 megahertz kit. And we are choosing the highest that is supported by this software, which is 3400. The software has timings for that and we may go beyond that as well because our kit will overclock above that. And we will choose safe timings because most of the time these will work with any of these ICs if they are the correct ones. Then we're just gonna take a photo of that, what the timing calculator shows us and gonna go into the BIOS. Before that, maybe you do a stock benchmark so that you can see the difference from before and after. But then we will go into the BIOS and go into the DRAM timing menu. And there you can set all the timings that the timing calculator tells you. Um, I would go only like one by one and then try and restart the PC. So save the BIOS, restart the PC and then try to boot into the BIOS again. Um, because if that works, at least you can get that far and uh, if something does not work anymore you know that this timing is an issue and you need to reduce that or increase it to get a stable system again because it is not a hundred percent guaranteed that these timings that the calculator spits out are 100% stable. If you have set all the primary and secondary timings, yes, the secondary are also important, although most of the users tend to ignore them. They are also pretty important and can lead to a big performance difference. So just set those also as the DRAM timing calculator says, and then you can set the voltages you need in most cases it only says to set the soc voltage which in amd cpus should be around 1.05 to 1.15 and the dram voltage which i would stay below 1.55 volts um, most of the ddr4 kits run 1.35 but there's also some high frequency kits that support 1.5 volts but I would not go much above that for daily use. I know there are a lot of overclockers that use 1.8 volts or more, but that is, as I said, for daily use, not really recommended. Also, we can achieve the clocks we are showing in this video with 1.5 volts also. But first we are going to start with the standard clock of the RAM kit, so just select that and boot into windows and check if everything's stable if everything works because if that is not stable you have a different problem somewhere else and you don't chase that down and maybe think that it's the uh, frequency that you increased but the other issue was actually the timings so just check if that's stable first and then worry about the frequency I would go up in the frequency in uh, 33 megahertz steps as you would always in DRAM. Um, so just step by step and then try to boot into Windows in every step because uh, DRAM or RAM is, if it gets unstable, it may not even boot into Windows or the first thing it won't do is boot into Windows. So uh, just go step by step with that. On AMD platforms, it is important to look at the FCLK frequency, so the Infinity Fabric Clock. That is most of the time half of the DRAM speed and it cannot really go past 1900 megahertz that much depending on your cpu it may even be lower or may be able to get higher but if you run above 3800 megahertz for example ram then you might unlink that frequency and keep that at the maximum stable frequency and then 
raise the RAM clock from there and just keep, keep the FCLK frequency at the maximum stable frequency because obviously if that is too high the system will get unstable as well then we're obviously gonna do a stress test we are using as i said before hci mem test and uh, this is going to i would recommend run at least for six hours to confirm that your ram overclock is stable because if ram is unstable it can lead to very weird behavior in terms of blue screens or data loss even so please make sure to confirm that this overclock is stable otherwise you might get into some trouble when gaming and uh, you might randomly blue screen your pc if you want to be a hundred percent safe i might even suggest running this stress test for 24 hours or at least 12 hours so just to be on the safer side and really really have the confidence that your overclock is stable as i said if it's not stable if it's blue screen if it, the tool is everything out just reduce the clock speed by one step so in our case 33 or 66 megahertz or whatever and try again and this is basically everything that's to this Obviously, you could overclock the RAM in much more detail. Actually, hardcore overclocking does lots of very interesting videos about this, but I don't want to go into that uh, topic that in depth. So I'm just going to cover the basics and how to do it pretty easily for pretty much everybody so that anyone could basically do it. So, okay, now you have seen how to do it. And now we are going to talk about the results. Obviously, the best thing is, or the thing that comes out of the RAM overclock is that the bandwidth, if you are overclocking the frequency, the bandwidth of the RAM increases. The, that you can see by um, benchmarking the read and write performance of the RAM, and this will get greater. This makes great difference if you're using an APU or integrated graphics, but may not yield as much performance difference if you're just using a normal gaming system where you're not using the integrated graphics because there it will only do something in the CPU limit or in CPU dependent applications. So in the CPU limit in gaming, you can still expect performance gains. In our case, where we overclocked from 3200 to 3533, we saw about 2 to 4% performance, which isn't much. So yeah, don't expect too much, as I said. And uh, in other applications, for example, you could expect some more like 3 to 5% in that range, obviously. When you have a kit that is overclocked from, for example, 2400 to 3200 megahertz or from 3200 to 4000 megahertz, for example, then you might see a much larger change in performance, but there's still some limits to where it's gonna go. You're not gonna get 20% plus performance, but I think that's kind of obvious. But as I said, you'll get some kind of a boost if you do want it and also it has the good thing that it does not really increase your power consumption of the system so this is free performance if you would say it like that i hope you could take something away from this video and uh, yeah let me know what you think about ram overclocking have you tried it yourself how was your luck on your ram kit maybe if you had some special ram that overclocked pretty well uh, as I said, for example, some Samsung B or E die uh, chips do really well in overclocking. And um, yeah, otherwise, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.